Hey guys, how are you today? Welcome to the second part of how to draw a Coca-Cola can with Copic markers. If you haven't seen the first part, definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Before we get started, let's talk about art supplies. As always, you can find the full list of art supplies in the description of the video. So, I'll be using Copic markers and you can use any other alcohol-based markers you have. I used the same colors in the previous video, and I'll be adding two more colors in this one. R11 Pale Cherry Pink and Cool Gray number 7. And I also use two erogenous colored pencils, Maroon and Indigo. In this video, I'm using a Copic sketchbook, and I created a free coloring page for you, so you can download print it out and draw with me. You can find the link in the description of this video. So let's get started. I start drawing with the lightest color, R11, pale cherry pink, and I always start with the lightest color and step by step add more intense and darker colors. Usually before starting drawing with markers, I always put a sheet of paper or just tracing paper under my drawing to protect the next page of my sketchbook. And at this point, I double checked if I have a tracing paper under my drawing. And I'm using a Canson tracing paper this time. But in case you don't have tracing paper, it's okay to use any other thick paper you have. But let's come back to the drawing. At this point, I look at the photo reference, which you can also download for free in the description of this video, and draw the light with a Coca-Cola can with R11 Pale Cherry Pink. I'm drawing a squashed Coca-Cola can, and I apply the same rules I used in the previous video. I'm gonna draw reflected light first, and later I'll fill drawing with primary color and then I'll add core shadow and details. And I'll follow the shape and try to emphasize the uneven surface of the can. It looks like a lot, but bear with me and I'll show you how to do that. And right now I'm gonna draw a reflected light. Every object has reflected light, and basically a reflected light is the light that bounces off something else and strikes whatever object you're drawing. And the reflected light is always lighter than the core color of the object. In my drawing, the core color of the can is warm red, and the reflected light is gonna be a cool pink color. In this case, I'm using Copic R83 Rose Mist. So I'll draw with R83 the reflected lights and also fill the light parts of the can with the same color. And 
Now, I'll cover the letters with cool gray number 1. But don't forget to leave the highlights inside the letters blank. If you covered the highlights by mistake, it's okay, don't worry. You can always fix that and draw them again on the white, with the white pencil or white gel pen. Let's also draw top and bottom parts on the can with the same color and we will darken these parts later with a dark gray color. Alright, and now I'll draw with Copic RV29 Crimson color. This is gonna be the primary color of the can, and I chose this one because it has a nice shade, something in between red and pink. And I'm gonna draw the whole can using this color, but I'll leave some space for highlights and I'll carefully outline the letters and don't draw with this color on the reflected light. Just stop there and we'll blend it with a pink color later.
At this point, I'm gonna start blending R83 Rose Mist color with the RV29 Crimson color, and I'll draw this way the whole can. Just don't forget to leave highlights blank, or you can draw highlights at the end on top of the mark drawing.
At this point, I realized that R11 Pale Cherry Pink is too light and I need to make it darker, so I draw with R83 Rose Mist color on top of that pinkish color. And now, let's come back to the letters. We need to make them darker, and for that I'm gonna use Copic Cool Gray number 3. And since our can is squashed and we have a fold on the surface, we need to emphasize that by darkening some parts of the letters. And we also need to blend Cool Gray number 3 into the lighter color Cool Gray number 1 to make a smooth, beautiful transition of the colors.
And I'm going to use the same cool gray number three color to draw the shadows on the top and bottom of the can. As I mentioned before, I made in darker colors step by step to give the shape of the can more depth and contrast. So I'm using cool grain number five to make shadows darker and to underline top and bottom parts. And of course, we need to smooth it out with a cool gray number one. And now it's time to start working on the shadows. I'm using Copic R56 current and I start defining the dark part of the can. It's a perfect color to help us underline the folds of the squashed shape. And at the same time, it's a little bit darker than our primary color.
All right, let's make our shadows even darker. I'll be using Copic RV69 Peony color. And as you see, I'm holding two markers. Because after drawing with RV69, we're gonna need to blend the edges out with RV29 crimson color. So we have a smooth color transition from dark to light color. And I'll use the same blending technique all over my drawing.
At this point, I decided that I need to underline the bottom part with a darker gray color to add more contrast. For that, I'm using cool gray number 7 and I'll smooth it out with cool gray number 5. I think you already noticed that I like mixing markers and colored pencils. It helps me define the shape of the object and also draw fine lines and details. I'm using two shades in this video, indigo, which is something between dark blue and grayish color, and maroon, which is basically dark red shade. So with these two colors, I'm gonna underline some parts of the letters, draw fine details and stroke of the can. And actually, this step is optional. If you like using only markers, skip the colored pencils. At this point, I decided to use a copied blender to make some parts of the can lighter. I already told you a little bit about the blender in the previous video, but for those of you who missed that part, I'll explain it quickly. You can do different things with blender, but what it basically does, it helps you to dissolve any color. For example, you can fix any mistakes with it. And again, I showed you how in the previous video. Or you can slightly make any color lighter by drawing on top of that color with Blender. The only thing I suggest you to do, clean the Blender on the side piece of the paper as you see me doing that, because it sucks the color in and can ruin your drawing. At the end, I usually go with white gel pen or pencil and add highlights, details, or fix tiny mistakes. 
Right now I'm using a Uni Posca white pen. It's a great opaque pen and it draws perfectly on top of the markers. Since I added typography details on the first drawing of the Coca-Cola can and I want to be consistent and make them look like they have something in common, I'm gonna draw these typography elements on this one as well. I think these tiny fine details make drawing look more interesting and more complex, but it's up to you, you can skip this step if you like. But in case you're gonna draw the typography as well, try to follow the shape of the can. This way it's gonna look much better. Just look at the photo reference and try to follow the way a text is aligned on the squashed can. And you can also compare to the previous drawing with regular rounded shape. And you can clearly see the difference. I always try to pay attention to details because every object is different and it helps me to understand what exactly ma makes this object look unique and recognizable. In this case, the iconic color of the can, its shape and lettering helps you distinguish the Coca-Cola can from any other objects.
right, I think we're done with the second drawing for now. And I'll continue drawing the last third part in the next video. If you like this video and want to see more videos like this on my channel in the future, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And don't forget to check out my Instagram. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.